Robot control systems have evolved in so many different ways since the turn of the century. Sensors, logic controllers, and innovations in microelectronics have driven incredible advances in society and in the first robotics competition. Evolving from standard controllers that map to exact motors to the autonomous systems we see today, the control system is what keeps us moving. On this episode, we're covering the history of control systems from tethers to transmitters, CRIOs to RoboRios, and the future of FTC and FRC controllers. Coming up next on Rewind. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. 1992 marked the inaugural season of FIRST. Everything was new to everyone. The robots, the kit of parts, the competition, but especially the control system. First as a concept is derived from the MIT course 2007, and the control systems in 1992 were sourced directly from that class. Tethers were lengthened, and the personal computer was substituted with a control box. This meant that teams could not program their own controls, but this was probably a good thing. One of the main issues with the 2007 robots of the early 90s was that they had to be programmed in assembly language, and only had a small amount of memory. First teams wouldn't have to worry about this aspect of the competition. 1992's first teams wired all components through this tether to a 12 volt power supply and two control boxes with two switches each, allowing control for up to four motors. These control systems had to be returned to first following the conclusion of the competition. This system was great for the level of competition that first wanted to achieve with this program. Wires got tangled, signals overlapped, and robots weren't true robots yet. They couldn't use any outside input besides the switches on the control box. In 1993, FIRST moved away from the use of the tether, and for the first time, FRC robots drove without any wires attached. The 1993 control system was a vast improvement over the 92 system, featuring a microcontroller, receiver, and battery all on board the robot. While teams still couldn't program their own instructions, the Termoflex and Motorola controllers allowed more direct control over six motors. Early control systems built on established systems that the FRC program knew would work at scale. By the 1995 season, it became obvious that FIRST needed to design a custom solution for this program, instead of relying on an off-the-shelf solution. For the 95 through 96 seasons, FIRST tested out a board that performed similarly to previous control systems. 10 outputs, 8 inputs. But teams still lacked one thing, the ability to use their own code to control the robot. In the 1997 season, this would all change. For the toroid tear season, for the first time, teams could use the basic Stamp 2 programming language to control their robots and incorporate sensors into their commands. Potentiometers and limit switches were included in the kit of parts, and robot code became much smarter overnight. Unfortunately, this also came with its downsides. The 1997 control system took up a very large footprint on the robot, and the Tekken speed controllers had the unfortunate problem of catching fire with too high a current draw. Despite the system's downsides, the culture of FIRST was shifting. More and more events were populating around the United States, and teams wanted to use the off-season to continue improving their designs. The 1997 control system was the first that could be used in the off-season, for a deposit fee of only $1,500. Before we get back to this video, we'd like to thank Animark for their continued support of fun content. Go to Animark.com for your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Featuring over 200 years of combined experience, Animark has now been in business for over 20 years servicing first teams and beyond. From electrical and mechanical, anything you may need, go to Animark.com to see how they can help your team and to get some of the best quality parts and superior service that your team deserves. By the turn of the century, FRC control systems had evolved from the umbilical cord tethers to programmable controllers that could be used beyond the competition season. Each of the iterations from here would build on making these systems faster, more adaptable, and more powerful. The 2000 control system would receive an overhaul from IFI, 
to a layout that is similar to the system that we use today. The IFI control system used team numbers in identifying driver stations, an RSL, speed controllers for motors that didn't catch on fire, and a fuse panel that looked much like today's PDB. However, one of the biggest innovations was that teams were now allowed to bring a laptop to the driver station to show outputs from their robot, creating visual feedback loops that made these robots smarter and more precise. Over the next decade, First would introduce support for multiple programming languages and custom circuitry, including C programming in 2004 and EasyC and LabVIEW in 2006. The IFI control system ushered in the turn from remote-controlled, pre-programmed motors to user-programmable logic and sensors. It set the standard for what a control system should do and improved areas that teams needed innovation in. With innovation in mind, National Instruments, or NI, debuted the c -Rio control system for the 2009 season. It supported C++ and LabVIEW programming, complete with a specialized for FRC Linux driver station. It, this would be the standardized system for the next five years. The c -Rio and its improved version 2, the c -Rio 2, used cartridge slots to increase functionality, depending on team usage. It was lighter, smaller, and increased functionality over the previous versions, while also being the most complex. However, it featured something that previous control systems hadn't. Good, accessible documentation available over the internet. Despite this, the c -Rio wasn't without its issues. Its slow processing and new coding languages caused teams to lose time between the 2008 and 2009 seasons, just trying to get the system up and running. Setup for the control system on an existing robot was rumored to have taken four to five hours on the light side. The benefits outweighed the drawbacks, and many innovations were discovered with the system by teams, integrating new sensors, systems, and autonomous functions. Technology evolves quickly, and the control system would be no different. It was announced that the version 3 of the c -Rio would be a different system to debut in the 2015 season, called the RoboRio. The NI RoboRio was introduced as the evolution of the c -Rio, and replaced the Rio, analog breakout, and digital sidecar, large elements of the system that contributed to weight and bulkiness. The contract was through 2020 and extended in 2019 to the 2026 season. The RoboRio was an adaptable system and helped teams through many transition periods, from brushed motors to brushless, from motor and port limits to unlimited motors, the Rio was praised at the release for quick processing times, but now, 10 years later, it lags behind modern systems. In the fall of 2023, FIRST put out an RFP for a control system for the future. The new control system proposal looks similar to the current Rio, but with a number of upgrades. Most notably, this system will standardize FRC and FTC's electronics, allowing better transition between the two programs. Following the scheduled outline for timing, the new control system has gone through review at first, and we can expect an announcement on their choice soon. If we look back at the history of the control system, this will be the largest change that the system has seen since the transition from the IFI controller to the c in 2009. With the level of interconnectedness in our community today, we can expect that this transition will go over much better than in the past. But until then, thanks for the rewind. Make sure you subscribe to the Fun Robotics Network YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the show, give it a like. Let us know your favorite or least favorite aspect of the old control systems in the comments or any other topics you'd like to see covered next time on Rewind. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.